You probably know about Buddy Holly's song, Peggy Sue, and That'll Be the Day, and Every Day, a couple of songs like that. But do you know the last song Buddy Holly ever wrote? It only took him 15 minutes to write. I'm J.P. McDermott for West Coast Rambles True Tales. Be sure to like and subscribe. In December of 1958, Buddy Holly was at a crossroads. After a great string of top 20 hits like That'll Be the Day and Peggy Sue and Oh Boy, Buddy had dropped off the charts for the first time in nearly a year and a half. In November of that year, he'd broken up with his best friends and his band, The Crickets. He'd cut ties with Norman Petty, his manager and the producer of his best hits. Earlier that fall, He'd moved from Lubbock, Texas to New York City to be closer to the music publishing business. He moved into a brand new apartment in Greenwich Village with his brand new wife, Maria Elena. In December of 1958, Buddy Holly needed money. He'd always liked nice things and always wanted to have the best of everything. When he was just a kid, he borrowed $1,000 from his brother Larry so he could get a good guitar and good stage clothes, which is how Buddy Holly came to have one of the first Stratocaster in all of Texas. Buddy Holly's apartment rent was $1,000 a month, which is about $10,000 in today's money. So Buddy needed money. On top of all this, Buddy had big plans for the future. He purchased land back in Lubbock to build a recording studio to be called Prism Studios, and he was starting a record label, Prism Records. All these plans were going to cost money. Buddy should have had a lot of money coming in. After all, he'd sold millions of records, but Norman Petty had tied up all of Buddy's royalties. When Buddy said he was splitting with Norman, Norman stopped writing him checks. Like today, the only sure way for a musician to make money back in those days was to perform live. So Buddy decided to book a tour. He got in touch with the General Artist Corporation, a booking firm out of New York that he'd worked with before on a tour of the Midwest called the Summer Dance Party. If the summer dance party worked out, why not a winter dance party? A tour of Minnesota and Wisconsin and Iowa in the winter. What could possibly go wrong? Buddy had a tour, but no crickets. He was going to need a band and fast. The tour was set to start on January 23rd in Milwaukee, just about three weeks away. With all this in mind, Buddy and Maria Elena flew to Lubbock to celebrate Christmas with the Holly family. While he was in Lubbock, Buddy decided to do what he'd always done for fun, go to the radio station and hang out with some friends. Station KLLL in downtown Lubbock was owned by two brothers, Slim and Sky Corbin, who Buddy had known for a long time. Slim and Sky also employed a good-looking young DJ by the name of Waylon Jennings. You might have heard of him. Buddy was a big fan of Waylon's. He liked the way that he sang. In fact, he liked it so much that he had produced Waylon's very first recording back in September. Waylon was going to be one of the artists that was featured on Prism Records once that got off the ground. Now, Buddy got it into his mind that Waylon was going to be one of the crickets on the next tour. He handed Waylon a Fender bass and said, you've got about three weeks to learn how to play this thing. Waylon may have protested a little bit, but Buddy was very persuasive. While Buddy and Waylon and Slim were hanging around KLLL, they got to talking about songwriting, as songwriters do. Buddy said it was pretty easy to write a rock and roll song. This led to some discussion and some dispute, and the story is that somebody bet Buddy that he couldn't write a song in 20 minutes. Now, I'm not sure who that guy thought he was talking to, but Buddy came back in about 15 minutes with a brand new song, You're the One. They decided to make a quick recording of the song right there at the production studios at KLLL. Buddy borrowed a guitar, and Slim and Waylon joined in clapping hands more or less in time with Buddy's beat. For their percussive efforts, Slim and Waylon eventually got 25% of the songwriting royalties for You're the One. That was December 27, 1958, and as far as anyone knows, that's the last song Buddy Holly ever wrote. Just six weeks later, Buddy would get on a small plane in the cold, dark Iowa night, and one of the most creative voices in the rock and roll era was silenced. But he did leave us this one last great song, You're the One. You're the one that's causing my blues. You're the one that I'll always choose. You're the one. That I hate to lose You're the one that's meant for me You're the one That I'm dreaming of You're the one Sent from heaven above You're the one That I'll always love You're the one that's meant for me Sometimes you make me feel so sad You make me cry deep in my heart I feel like an actor in a play That doesn't fit the part you're the one, and I want you to know you're the one that thrills in me so. You're the one 
I can't let you go, you're the one that's meant for me Sometimes you make me feel so sad, you make me cry deep in my heart I feel like an actor in a play that doesn't fit the part You're the one, and I want you to know you're the one That thrills in me so, you're the one can't let you go, you're the one that's meant for me You're the one that's meant for me You're the one that's meant for me Thanks for watching. I'm J.P. McDermott, and this was the true tale of Buddy Holly's last song. <laughs>